Okay, so let's have a look first at how the cameras work. First of all, we've got the lens inside the top turret. That's fixed on a long extension cable to the 808 number 16 camera. It's using, instead of a battery, a capacitor. That's because the whole thing's being powered from the main battery from the VTX. The camera then links through into the switch here. This is an FPV switch, Hobby King three-way switch. Quite cheap, about £3.50 from um, HK. You can put three cameras in it. I'm only using two. Top turret is in camera number one. You've then got a cable coming here from the switch out to the video transmitter. What well, you've got to watch out with if you're using a fat shark transmitter like I am, the uh, negative and positive um, pins are actually reversed compared to other parts of this system. So you would need to reverse the red and the black or the red and the brown cables to make sure that um, they actually work properly. Red's normally in the middle, as you see here. By the time it goes into the VTX, it needs to be on the outside with the brown in the middle. The video is then powered through a fat shark power filter running off the balancing cable of either a 2, 3 or 4S. I'm using a 3 for this sake, it'll be a 3 inside the plane. So that's the, uh, the camera function for the top turret. The ball turret works pretty much the same way. We've got the lens inside. We've then got a cable coming out of the back, going into the 808 number 16. Again, got a capacitor because it's powered from the uh, VTX battery. We've then got uh, this special 808 cable, which again, runs through and into the FPV switcher. This one's in camera slot number three. Slot number two is uh, empty. And from the transmitter, I've got it set to a three-way switch, which allows me to switch between cameras in flight, flicking back and forth between top turret and ball turret as I please. The switch has then got a link, which runs through and into um, the receiver. So the receiver is sending a signal from the switch on the transmitter on the ground through the orange cable and into the switch. This side of the switching device is powered by the battery that runs uh, the receiver. This side is powered by the battery that is uh, running the um, video transmitter. The two sides don't meet so there shouldn't be any power issues but I would warn out uh, I've burned five of these out because they seem to be quite twitchy um, when you're connecting it I found that if I don't connect the a receiver first if I connect the video transmitter first then the receiver sometimes it just blows this I, I think it's probably just the uh, the quality control And then because this isn't the flight receiver, this is a separate receiver for a buddy, it needs its own power. It's not going to come from the airplane's ESC. So we have a power cable coming through a power filter and in flight I'm running that off a little two cell. Obviously with these power filters you can run it off what you like. It'll reduce the power to the right amount for your uh, receiver. Then we look at how to control the movement and what you'll see there's a pan and a tilt cable running to a pan and tilt servo in each of the two uh, turret positions um, on the ball. It comes through and I've got the ball um, running off um, aileron and elevator in there. And then the uh, same applies. There's a pan and tilt running out to um, move the turret on the top. And that's using throttle and rudder on my spare transmitter. I hope that's been useful guys. Um, it's certainly working and functioning fully outside the plane. I guess the only big trick now is going to be how to fit that lot inside the fuselage.